Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about something that we talked about in a previous lesson, a union. Now, unions are really cool in that we can compactly store information together and sort of access a particular type based off of, well, what we've stored in that union. But sometimes we want a little bit more type safety. So in this lesson, I'm going to introduce something known as a variant, which was introduced in C++17. Now, variants are sort of a tag union, and I'll go ahead and show you what that means, with basically the idea that we want to sort of tag our specific data types and maybe access our union in a particular way. So let's go ahead and take a little look at this and see how this works. So first and foremost, just to take you to the CPP reference page to see standard variant. This is what we're going to be working on uh, if you want to follow along. But before we even get to that, let's just go ahead and refresh what we were doing with unions here. So what I've got here is my example of a union here. And let me go ahead and leave this big here. And recall again that a union's way to compactly put together data and depending on how we access the union, whether it's with an integer or a short, we're accessing just part of that information. Okay, again, the union is just itself a collection of bytes matching the largest data size. So I've already run this program here and compiled it so you can see that this particular union is just four bytes of information, taking on the largest data type size here with an int. So what I want to show you that's new this time is this thing here, variant, which was introduced in C++17. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave this help page over here so you can have an idea of what's going on here. Now, from the help page here, you'll see that standard variant represents a type safe union here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you a few examples of what that actually means by first creating one here. So let's just go ahead and create a variant here. And then what we do in the template parameters here is we actually specify the parameters we want. So let's go ahead and match what we have here in an int and a short. And I'm just going to call this uh, data for now here. OK, so that's what we need to create our actual variant. And now if I actually want to use this thing, well, I can just go ahead and say data equals seven or something of this type here. And now let's just go ahead and print out whatever is in data and let's see what happens here. So I'll go ahead and recompile this program. And hmm, okay, so there's no type named uh, type here. And we're getting a whole bunch of error messages. In fact, let me go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger and put it on the other screen here. And in fact, because this is a templated uh, data structure that we're working with here, again, we get these sort of uh, doom here with all the different uh, error messages here. So we need something else if we want to be able to retrieve uh, some piece of data here. So again, just to show you that this works here, let me go ahead and comment out this line here. Uh, compile it and uh, it runs, it's doing something. But how to actually retrieve the value here? Well, again, let's go ahead and look at our help page here, variant. So here, because this is a class that's essentially wrapping up um, our arguments here, and we can see that here we have the uh, parameter pack and we can put a bunch of different types here. So make sure you check out the template lessons. Um, we're going to need something to retrieve a value. And what we're actually going to use here uh, is one of these non-member functions. And let's go ahead and try this get here. And we could go ahead and say, see that it says reads the value of the variant given the index or the type here, if the type is unique. OK, so let's go ahead and try this out here. So I'll go ahead and put this back here. And again, let's just go ahead and try dot get. And let's see what else we need here. Well, we need uh, the particular uh, type, for instance. So let's go ahead and try that out. And I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, let's just try to get the field of int here, OK? Um, now, I can go ahead and try it uh, like this. Let's go ahead and see if that works here. And it gets us no member named git here. So again, this is just something we have to be careful with when we're using a CPP reference um, uh, for just how to read the documentation. Again, it's non-member functions, OK? So we are doing, uh, let me just reform this here get as the integer, whatever the integer type is for data here. And again, we have int here and we have short. So those should be the two sort of valid uh, things that we can use here. So let me go ahead and leave this here. Again, non-member functions, recompile this, rerun it. And now we can see that seven is printed out here. So pretty cool that we can do that here. Now, commonly what folks will do just to make this uh, example a little bit more interesting is maybe we'll go ahead and put something like string here again, just to show you that this works. Here is short. And let me go ahead and uh, rerun this. 
by recompiling, rerunning, and hmm, this time we got something interesting here. So this time, since I put in short here, and my data was put to seven here, it says we actually got an exception here. Wrong index uh, for the variant. Now this is showing off actually some of the power here of this actual uh, data type here. It's saying that, hey, if you get the wrong sort of uh, piece of information here, which seven here is being treated as an integer here. So let's just go ahead and um, show maybe a, a more interesting example here. Let me change this to float here. And again, I'll try to change it to float here. I'll say, okay, yeah, seven, that's probably uh, implicitly could be treated as a float, right? In our code, we've seen seven convert to 7.0, no problem. So let's go ahead and try this again, just to see if it uh, happens again. So it compiles and runs fine. But again, when I run it, I actually get an exception here that says, hey, it's throwing this thing, bad variant access, uh, wrong index for our variant. Okay, hmm, what's going on here? So let's go ahead and uh, just try this out again by just treating this as uh, 7.0f here. Okay, so now data is actually uh, set with a float uh, type here. Let's go ahead and run it, and now it actually runs here. So already you can see this example was a little bit peculiar, or maybe even a little bit frustrating if you're working with variant, but it adds type safety to unions. And that's sort of the point of what it's doing here. We actually uh, are tagging or assisting this by adding some data here. Now, I want to go ahead and show you sort of it, that unions and variants aren't a apples to apples, or they're not exactly the same thing. Um, this idea that, um, and I'll go to the help page here, a variant um, is known as what's a tag union. That's because it's you know specifically working with some sort of type here. Uh, but the implementation details do differ a little bit. And I want to go ahead and just show you a simple example of this by just printing off the size of uh, data here. So let's say size of here, data. We'll go ahead and leave our little example here. And what you'll notice here is that the data size, that's this one here, is eight bytes versus, well, our union, that was only four, right? This really compact structure. So the reality is the variant or its implementation is probably just implementing this thing here with the different types here as a struct here. And that sort of makes sense. It's making this a template, right? And it's going to generate some code for each of the different types that are here, int, float, and so on. Uh, so it's not as compact or efficient as a union if we're really trying to save bytes. What we're getting or what we're trading off is this type safety, right? This ability to get something. Now, I want to go ahead and show you one more example here, because this in particular can be kind of a frustrating experience if you say, well, this isn't a float here. Now, it's exactly what we want, but you know, do we want our program to crash? Do we want an exception? So something else that we have, and I'm going to go ahead and take you to the CPP reference page in our non-member functions here is get if. So this will actually return a pointer to the value um, of our variant uh, given an index. Uh, if it's unique or it will return null. So this is one way that we can sort of uh, save ourselves in case we don't want termination uh, to be the uh, sort of default case here. So let's go ahead and try out uh, git if here. And I'm just going to throw in some uh, value here. So let's just go ahead and say uh, attempt, you know, what we're trying to retrieve here. And let's get if here. And let's just say we have some wild type here. I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and say like a long here uh, that we haven't seen before from our data. Uh, and then let's go ahead and say, okay, we found a uh, long here. We found a long. And we'll go ahead and end it there. Uh, and then this code will um, essentially attempt to treat well, whatever is in data as a long, and if that's successful, then we can proceed and you know use whatever is stored here. Now, there is one little detail that I have to be uh, careful of here. So let me go ahead to uh, get if, and just to go ahead and show you that we're actually passing in a uh, pointer here. Now, there's uh, a few different uh, variants here that you can see. Um, there's a few different parameters. So I'm just going to uh, do a search here for PV, just so you can see it sort of stand out here a little bit, you'll notice that this is a pointer here in git if here. That's a lot to, uh, it's kind of hard to see with all this uh, mess here. <laughs> so what I'm going to go ahead and do uh, again in our code here is just show you that there's that tiny little detail here, put an ampersand 
and let's go ahead and uh, try to compile our code and see if this works here. So go ahead and compile it just like we did. And it looks like I'm getting a little bit of a mess here with my errors. And that is a good thing here because again, well, I've just sort of made the mistake here of putting it along here. But again, that's not one of our actual types here. So again, we're able to, uh, if we look at this const expert, uh, and I'll have to do a specific lesson on this, um, it didn't find one of these types here. So let's go ahead and use one from our list here, int or float. Uh, let me go ahead and just say float and go ahead and put float in here. And let's just go ahead and now try to compile it and run it here. Okay, so uh, this is pretty cool. And I guess it also shows um, a really cool example of const expert and how we can use it to catch some of these errors at compile time error code. So again, variant can be a safer type of union in this way, which is really awesome. And again, just to show you the case where it isn't going to catch this again, let's change our data to uh, seven here. And I'll get rid of our line here. And at this point, if we recompile our program, again, it works because we're testing uh, git if with one of the different types here. And then we can compile here, and this time it did not work. So that's uh, totally fine with how this is working. Now, there's other ways that you can check out the data here, and you can actually, um, if you really wanted to hack this together, uh, you could use index and try to compare the indexes. But I like this strategy of using git if. So instead of doing data.index, uh, which will return either a zero if you're accessing int or a one if you're accessing float. Uh, this will just sort of check to make sure you're doing the right thing. So this is a style uh, that I would use if I was using variant. But let me go ahead and just run this last uh, example here just so you can see the index. Let's run it a few times here. So if I run it here, you'll see the index is zero because we're treating this as a uh, integer, which is the zeroth uh, template parameter here. And if I change this to a float, we expect this index to change to one here if I recompile and rerun here. And then of course our block of code executes here. So again, where I would probably use standard variant is anywhere where I really need type safety. In fact, if you don't have to be super, super optimized uh, as far as the information that you're passing back and forth, you could replace your unions with this. And it also could just come in handy, say, if you have a function that's returning some sort of data and you want some information out of it. Maybe it is some sort of event generating function, for instance, uh, which instead of just returning an arbitrary union, you could actually uh, check what the uh, actual type is. Or, or what was generated or how some data structure was used. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new. These are really some cool things that were added into the language here. And again, the sort of theme of C++ uh, as it goes on is to add things like the type safety. So these tagged unions are a great example. And you could see that little example here where I uh, made a mistake here of with const expert catching some of those errors here for your actual uh, template parameters. So overall, I think that's a really cool thing and it can help make you uh, write some better and safer C++ code. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. As always, like, subscribe, and comment if any of those things are uh, things you feel like doing and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.